welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to what is nearly my final day in LA. I leave tomorrow back to the UK, which is quite devastating. One thing a lot of you have been telling me I should do before I leave is head to the Peterson Automotive Museum. Now this is a museum dedicated to cars in LA. The dream, right? Well, I've actually been uh, last year. I went when I was here for a Michelin event, uh, but as of course, like any museum, the, uh, the exhibits change every few months. And apparently right now, there's a quite exceptional Porsche display exhibit. I don't I mean, I don't go to museums very often, so I'm not really that good with the terminology. But anyway, that's where we're headed today to check out some Porsches and other things, cars. Woo Now you're going to have to forgive me slightly because this is a museum. <laughs> Most of my tour is going to be done with this sort of slightly creepy, hushed voice, but it's a bit awkward vlogging in a museum, so I'm kind of whispering slightly. But anyway, this is the actual entrance sort of area. This is the public area. You don't actually have to pay to get into this part. They have a very nice uh, restaurant cafe there. But look, starting things off with 918 Spider in a stunning dark blue. I love this spec personally. And then we've got a 356 speeds to roadster is it, is it just a roadster i mean this is a little bit before my time 1951 356 roadster so this car right here where i'm reading this by the way i'm not a pro on classic porsches um won six of the seven races in which it campaigned in Wow, so this is a proper legit 50s race car and a shape which we now know carried on for years afterwards that 356 shape. So this is a very early version, but yeah, pretty incredible to be welcomed by a 918 Spider and then this. And we're getting a bit of a sneak peek as to what we're going to see once we pay to go inside. That is dreamy. Anyway, right, let's go and find the proper entrance. This end, not only do we have one of the best gift shops in the world, and I'm speaking from experience, but we have two of my favourite modern Porsche race cars. These are the 911 GT1s. This is the road-going street version. This one's saying it's from 1998. Look at this picture of it on the road. <laughs> what a wild thing. These things sound and look insane. Over here I think we have one of the most iconic modern day Porsche racing liveries, the Marlboro livery on a 1997 GT1. So these cars came second and third at Le Mans in 96. Um, we've got another What's this car over here? This looks like an old Can-Am car. Yes, Can-Am, 1973 Can-Am, Spider, Porsche and Audi. And it's got Die Hard sponsorship? Is that the movie? No, that can't be. What? This side, some even earlier cars. As I say, I'm sorry for any Porsche aficionados. I'm just not that clued up. Look how tiny these things are. Oh my God. So this is 1967 Porsche 910. Porsche. Porsche. I'm going to have to start saying Porsche, aren't I? If I'm in a Porsche exhibit um, before you're going mental at me. Look at... <gasps> those seats you're literally lying down can you see that that's outrageous what about this one this is more like a a road car but obviously based on the car we just seen in front 1964 904 carrera gts and again what are the seats like? i don't know so they're a little bit more upright those seats don't know if you can see that wow look at the steering wheel is huge Now, this is freaking awesome to see two carbon series McLarens. We've got an MSO HS and a P1. I've seen the P1 before, but this MSO HS is a new addition since I'm last here. And these are both with the exposed exterior carbon fiber, not colored. They've got a uh, sort of alternate stitching and red calipers and things, but it's just bare carbon and they look so cool under the lights. I'm assuming these have been donated. I'm not sure if they're owned by the Peterson collection or family or whether they've been donated by somebody else but so cool to see them here and what I love with the P1 is you can see that the trickle charge is plugged in so if you didn't know that's where you have to plug in the trickle charger for the P1 and so there it is powering up this car so it doesn't absolutely die and look at all the carbon fiber inside oh so so cool I think that baby's not having such a good time <laughs> but look also MSOHS look at all the gold in there can you see that? 
That is nuts in the entire sort of engine bay and exhaust. It's all gold, and I'm assuming, because MSO are kind of crazy, that that is real 24 karat gold or 16 karat gold or some kind of gold um, rather than just faux gold. But yeah, this, this MSO HS is incredible. I found the Ferrari Romo. Now, whilst I'm having a mild panic attack by some of the cars that are on display in this room, and we need to go through each individually because of my Ferrari obsession, I'm actually coming over to this. This is a 599 GTO in a spec that I haven't seen before, and that is mainly because of the fact it has a red roof. A ton of the GTOs, at least the red GTOs that I see, tend to have black roofs. And so this, to me, looks really, really different. And I, I actually love it. It's got a black line running over the top. I'm not sure you can see. There you go, from the front. So that goes all the way over the top and onto the boot lid. The interior, I think, is absolutely stunning. The crema, cream interior with a sort of hardy racing seat. Even got the cream steering wheel. Oh my god, the 599 GTO. I think a car that was a little bit misunderstood when it first came out, but is an absolute animal. Sounds incredible. I would, again, love to have a go at one of these, and I just think this is a really, really nice example. But anyway, let's have a look around, because as I said, <coughs> there's some pretty ridiculous fries in here. Actually, let's just start here. 250 GTO. You can see number 24 on the bonnet there. This car in particular, let's see what the history of this car was. So this is a 1963 three version uh, actually nothing about this specific car but who cares it's a 250 gto still holds the record for the most expensive car that went to auction which was 58 million dollars was it i think uh, a few years ago now so you could argue that these cars could be priceless i'm not sure i think one would go for 100 million if it went for auction these days car prices are so insane look at that gearbox mechanism full-on le mans race car which you now see sometimes in historic racing events sometimes on the road <laughs> I have actually seen a couple on the road. Again, look how basic the seats are. One thing you don't tend to see a lot of anymore is red Ferraris with blue interiors. It was a really classic look, especially for the racing cars, and you don't see it too much. The exhaust pipes stick out so far. Oh, I, I, I personally, I mean, I said this about a lot of cars in this exhibit, uh, in this museum. This is a stunning looking car. Just the way the wheels fill the wheel arches, the big sort of gaps there i mean oh incredible anyway let's move on we've got a schumacher era ferrari formula one car this looks like a 2006 i'm gonna say maybe um number five on the side let's just come around and double check that yeah 2006 very cool uh cigarette advertising had gone out of the sport so even though the team is still sponsored by marlboro they couldn't show it hence the weird white bars now 250 lm now if you think the gto is a good looking car you could argue this might be better, not as successful, not got the same kind of heritage, but here we go, North American racing team. So this particular car, uh, Jochen Rint, wow, and Maston Gregory, I don't know Maston Gregory, but Jochen Rint, uh, a Formula One driver amongst also a very successful endurance car driver. And this thing is just the lines of it. It's got that more classic mid-engine layout compared to the GTO, which is obviously front-engined. And uh, yeah, very, very cool to see now. I don't know what on earth this is. This must be some kind of uh, weird body. Who did this? On the side, we've got Calozeria Ghia Torino. So I've never seen this before in my life. It's a 410 Super America by Ghia. I'm going to have to read this off as we look at it. Considered the ultimate road going Ferrari of its day, the 410 Super America was delivered in chassis only form to coach builders so that a custom built body could be made for each car. That's insane. This in 1956, I mean, people must have lost their minds as a Ferrari. It's even got this slightly tacky Ferrari lettering on the front. I actually don't like it <laughs> as a Ferrari. I'm not a fan, but uh, I guess a bit wacky. 550 Barchetta parked up here in the corner. Moving on, we've got a Ferrari 857 Sport, another car I have never seen before. Well, I quite like it. it's got the sort of D-type-esque fin behind the driver, single-seater position. It's got a sort of look of the 250 Testarossa, I suppose. Um, but yeah, never seen it before, very cool. Coming over here, we have 
possibly one of the most iconic Ferraris, the 1949 166 MM Barchetta. So these are some of the very, very first Ferraris, and I've actually been out in a 166 Barchetta during Monterey Car Week. They are such cool little cars, Barchetta meaning like little boat, um, and it does look like a sort of little boat you could take out on Lake Como, and I love the fact this is a racing car, but it's got such beautiful lines. Firstly, it's almost got fucking, look at that stance, look how far, far out the wheels sit from the actual bodywork and then again got to remember this is a racing car and look how stunning that steering wheel is oh i love this thing is that the fuel tank that might, that can't be the fuel tank can it moving on we've got a 1947 125 s is this the first ferrari let's read the plaque um after World War II, Enzo Ferrari rebuilt his Maranello workshop, which had been levelled by Allied bombs. Um, and this was the first car to bear his name. Yeah, down the 125S. So this must be a, a replica. This can't be a real car, because I'm pretty sure they all got written off. And we're going to come all the way around here um, for the car that I missed. It is a 410 Super America. This one by by Series 1 Coupe by Buono. Buono. A little bit better looking. Interesting, he still has those kind of like flicked rear arches which I guess was a very American look back in the 50s um, but yeah this room my wet dream well after a short distraction in the Ferrari room I have now made it to the main Porsche exhibit whilst I might not have as much knowledge of the cars down here I have the same level of appreciation check out some of the stunners that are in this room This is a Carrera GT prototype. So this isn't actually a final production car and it's got some really interesting different elements to it. The, the iconic wheels with the centre lock still there but very different design, different kind of front bumper. The interior is massively different. You've got a much more sort of elevated gear lever. Um, just to, oh yeah, look, there's got a sort of digital display there. Anyway, it's a very different interior. These kind of wacky side mirrors, not as a, a, a aggressive rollover hoops. Big old Porsche logo in the middle and around the back. It looks a little bit more recognisable as the Carrera GT, but there are just subtle elements, diffuser and things like that, which kind of prove that it's not the final production car. Never seen this before. I've always loved the shape, the 70s turbo. I just think such aggressive rear wheel arches with that sort of black line. This is an American spec, so you get the slightly bigger bumpers as well, but I don't know why this is just for me such a good looking 911. I find it really interesting what interests us as car guys because I love Porsche, I bloody own a Cayman and I've been getting into the brand more and more and this is arguably a collection of the most iconic and best Porsches of all time and I'm definitely looking around with my jaw on the floor but because of my lack of knowledge and because it's not the brand that I absolutely obsess over I've kind of rushed through this section yet the Ferrari room upstairs which is not supposed to be the main room or the the focus of this entire museum i spent about three hours in oogling over everything so yeah i can't explain it i am a ferrari fanboy and i apologize to any of you porsche fans that really wanted to see all of these cars in detail they are amazing they are beautiful there's about 10 of them that i would love to own uh, but it just doesn't get me doesn't get me excited or passionate in the same way that the old old ferrari roos do anyway peterson museum mega and I could talk normally again rather than that very creepy hushed voice. Oh, that was so good. That was so, so good. If you are a car guy in LA, I really think you have to come down to the Peterson because they are always changing it. I was here just a year ago and I think almost all the exhibits have changed except perhaps maybe the Batmobile. Uh, so yeah, really glad I came down. Sorry that I nerded out on all the Ferrari stuff. There was, of course, some amazing Porsche stuff going on and stuff that you could come and look at and nerd on. If you're a Porsche fan, a McLaren fan, a old motorsport fan, whatever it might be, there's stuff to see. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you have, and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.